Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Module. Here's lesson 29, the last lesson in module one. Okay, here we go, solving percent problems. Exploratory challenge one. We have a claim. Claim is find to find 10% of a number. All you need to do is move the decimal to the left once. Use at least one model to solve each problem. Example, a tape diagram, a table, a double number line diagram, or a 10 by 10 grid. Okay, as far as the 10 by 10 grid goes, um, I discourage that. It just is too tedious. Um, but any one of the other ones would be fine. So it says make a prediction. Do you think the claim is true or false? Um, I'm going to claim it's true. Explain why? Well, I know that 10% is the same as saying 10 over 100 because percent is not of 100. And when I reduce, that's 1 tenth, and 1 tenth as a decimal is 0.1. So if we multiply by 0.1, that is going to move a decimal one place to So it says here, determine 10% of 300. Well, if we're going to do what the problem asks for, okay, if we read the directions, and it says to use at least one model, then I will do that. I'll draw a line here. Okay, this is very difficult to do with this electronic pen. Here we go. I'm doing a tape diagram. There's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Okay, so there's a tape diagram that has 10 squares that are equal size, so therefore have equal value. All right, so if this, this whole thing is 100%, each piece is 10%. 10%, 10 times is 100%. 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%, 90%, 100%. Okay, so if this is worth 300, if our tape is worth 300 and we divide 300 by 10, zeros cancel, that means each square is worth 30. So I'm going to write 30 in. If some of you are still struggling with tape diagrams. The value in every square is equivalent. 30, 30, 30. All of them are the same. 30. Okay? So if I do my calculation here, then I see that I have 10 squares times 30 per square. 10 times 30 is 300. So, one tenth, as I said, each one of these is 10%. 10% of 300 then must be 30. So, using a tape diagram, I have determined that if I just put the best one place to the left on 300, I will, in fact, get 30, which is 10%. Okay, C, find 10% of 80. This time I'm going to do a double number line. One's going to be percent, and one's going to be a number. No, that is not hashtag. It's an old school number symbol. Okay, so if I'm going to do this, and I'm doing 10%, I need to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, a little further here, and 10. Therefore, this has to go up further. All right. Let me just erase that and clean that up. It's nice and neat. That's better. Okay. So, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. When you're doing a two-number line, Every single space has to be the same. You can't go from 70 to 75. These are distance of 10. They all must be distances of 10. So we get up to 100% right here. That is 100%. Okay, it says find 10% of 80. Well, if we're looking for 10% of 80 and 80 is our total, then 100 percent is 80 and that goes in line with the 100. Well, I can do simple mental math and since 50 percent is half, 
I can put a line there, and that is half of 80 or 40. If I do that again, I'm in between 20 and 30, so I can't go any further. But if I think of it this way, one, two, three, four, five steps to get to 40, then I can take that 40 divided by 5 and let each one be equal to a length of 8. So that's what we have to figure out is what each one is going to be. 8, 16, 24, 32, plus 8 is 40, plus 8 is 48, plus 8 is 56, plus 8 is 64, plus 8 is 72, and plus 8 gets us to 80, or 100%. Okay, so it says find 10% of 80. Here's 10, and there's 80. 10% of 80 is 8. Okay? Yes, that was a lot of work. Why did I do it that way? It could have been so much easier if we just moved the decimal to the left. The reason I did these was because I follow directions. Okay? Use at least one mark. Okay? And I'm not going to do that for the remainder of them. I just wanted to show you how you can do a tape diagram and how you can do a number line diagram. Now we are going to go by the rule because it seems to be true. Because Move the decimal one place to the left, that is 30. Move the decimal one place to the left, 80 becomes 8. So I believe this is true because I have proof of two different methods came up with that and made it true. So if I move 64 over one decimal place, the 6, 4 becomes 6.4. Find 10% of 5 over 1. 10% of 5 is 0.5 half. Okay, now I'm going to be careful. 10% of some number is 48. Now up here we were trying to find 10% of a total. And so we had the total, we're looking for the part. So when we're going from total to part, we move one decimal place to the left. But if we're going to go from, if we don't know the total, but we know the part, we have to find the total. We are going to move the decimal place on the other direction. We don't want, this is 10%, we want 100%. I will have to move the decimal this way. And that will tell me 480. Okay, 10% of 480 is 48, because now if I take my answer and move the decimal place left, I get 48. Okay, so if you're given the total and you're finding the percentage, you move the decimal to the left. If you're given the portion and you're looking for the total, you move the decimal place one to the right. So that is going to be 60. Okay? You can understand that. Next page. Gary read 34 pages of a 340 page book. What percent did he read? Well, if we just remember what we were just talking about, 340 is the total, 34 is the part, and we're what, looking for a percentage. Well, I see 3, 4, I see 3, 4, but they zero. Um, that is just an identification shortcut in math. We should be able to identify multiples of 10. Um, so, I remember my rule. If I'm going from total to part, I'm going to the decimal to the left. So the 10% of 340 is 34. Okay, so the answer is, this is 1%, we read 10%. 10% of 340 is what he read, 34. Now this one says, Michael read 16 pages of his book. If this is 10% of the book, how many pages are in the book? Okay, so we're given a 10%. We are given a portion of the book he read. And how many pages are in the book? That is a total. We know the portion. We're looking for the total. We're moving the decimal one place to the right. So I'm going to take that 16, 16, and call it 16.0, if you will, and move that decimal one place to the right. So my answer is a 160 pages. Okay, how many pages are in the book? 160 pages. Using the solutions to the problems above, what conclusion can you make about the claim? Well, I can claim that the, I, the conclusion I can make about the claim is the claim is true. The claim is true. 
and what was the claim? To find 10% of a number, all you need to do is move the decimal to the left once. Okay? What conclusion can we make about this claim? We can claim that the conclusion is true. We have just done. <laughs> we have just done. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight examples, and they all came out to be true. Okay, exploratory challenge. If an item is already on sale and then there's another discount taken off the new price, this is the same as taking the sum of the two discounts off the new price. That is our claim, okay? I already know the answer to this, so I'm not going to make a prediction. I already know whether it's true or false or not. We're gonna go back to that. So let's just start off by seeing if, if it is true. So Sam purchased three games for $140. So disregard that three. It has nothing to do with the problem. We're not going to divide by three. It's never going to, it's not asking us how much each game was. So let's just say Sam purchased some games. We don't care. The total is $140. Okay, so don't let that three confuse you. For $140 after a discount of 30%, we were given a percentage and we are given a discounted price, which is a part. We want to know the original price, which is the total. We have a uh, percentage over 100. Our formula says equals one part to the percent over 100 equals part over 100. Okay? So we were given 30%. Now, the next thing we have to keep in mind is he purchased the game for $140. That is not the discount. That's the amount he paid after the discount. So what you need to understand is if we are discounting 30%, if the store is going to knock 30% off, we are going to pay 70% because that has to total 100%. The amount we pay and the amount the store discounts us equals the total price. And you need to keep that in mind. We also always want to know what this value is so that we can find the other value that adds up to 100. So we take 100 minus the given. So if he purchased a game for $140, after the discount of 30%, that means he paid 70% of the price. So our percent is going to be 70%, because that's what we paid for the game. It's not how much we received for a discount amount. So 70 over 100 equals the part over the unknown whole. Okay, so 70 will go into 140 evenly. So sometimes there's easier ways to do this. I can simply say, oh, 70 is two times, or 140 is 70 times two. So if I do the same under here and say 100 times two, I'm going to get 200. So he purchased a game for $140. After a 30% discount, the original price was $200. Okay, and you can always check. 200 times 30%, I mean 3, is 60. 3 times 2 is 6. 200 minus 60 is the price we pay. C. If Sam has you had used 20% off coupon and opened a frequent shopper discount membership to save 10%, would the game, game still have a total of over so this is 20% and then an additional 10%. So they're telling you that, okay, well, that's a total of 30%, right? Wrong way, sorry about that. Okay, so if we go back to this page again, I just want to show you, okay? The discount amount was 30%. And the question at the top was, if an item is already on sale and then there's another discount, the new price is the same as taking the sum of the two. Well, this is the sum of the two and we got a $200 total price, and the discount was 140 discounted price. So what they're asking is, if the store gives you a 20% coupon, and then since you're joining their frequent shopper club, okay, you get another 10% at the register, is that 20 and then the additional 10 equal to the sum of 30%? So I'm going to try to see that. So you have to think of it this way again. What does... What percent 
we have to add 20% to get 100%. Because we are not trying to figure out how much we're getting off, how much we're trying to get paying. So we want to know that after the discount, we're paying 80%. And after this savings at the register, we're going to pay 90%. Because 90% plus 10 is 100, 80% plus 20 is 800. Okay, so the game was $140. Will it, okay, it says, would the game still have a total of $140? So we already know the total price was $200 for our last product. Okay, now we want to know if that total price, if we discount 10% at the register, and then another 20% for the coupon, if it's going to be equivalent to that 30% discount, and are we going to pay $140? So that's our goal price to see if it's, so is the discounted price one hundred and forty dollars? And that's a question mark. We don't know if that's true. Okay, I'm question mark at the beginning. We want to make sure or we want to know if that is one hundred and forty dollars when we do these discounts. So let's start at the register and work our way back. So they're going to give us 10% off, which means we're going to pay 90% of the total, which we know is $200. Okay? That's a quick, easy calculation. 100 will go into 200 two times. So 90 times 2 is $180. So the 10% discount we received will drop our price to $100. Now we're going to take that $180 and take an 80% discount off, or 20% discount off that, which means we have to pay 80%. So then, then the next step is part or percent over 100 equals the part we're looking for over the whole price, which was the whole price being after the 90% discount. That okay. So, 100 will not go into 180 even. Okay. So we are going to reduce. And 10 will not go into 180 evenly. So we're going to reduce again. And that's going to give us, if we reduce by half, it's going to give us four-fifths equals 180. Okay? So 80 over 100 is equal to 4 over 5. And we want to see if that equals 1. Now we can do this. And 5 will go into 18 3 times, with the remainder of 3. And 5 will go into 36 times. So we're going to multiply 4 times 36. So if we take that $200 original price and take 10% off, it's going to drop the price to $180. Then we take that $180 and now we're going to knock 20% off and that's going to drop it down to $144. So the question is, would the game still have cost $140? And the answer is no. So I can conclude that 20% discount plus a 10% discount, it's not the same as taking a 30% discount. Okay, and 20% plus 30% does not equal 30%, it doesn't look right, but in this situation, 20% plus 10% of that 80% does not equal 30%. That's what I mean by this. So now what was the claim again? If an item is already on sale and then there's another discount taken off the new price, this is the same as taking the sum of the two discounts. Okay, so do I agree with that claim? No. Okay, and it says explain why or why not. Create an example. Well, the explanation's right there in the work in number C. Part C. Um, $144 is not the same as $140. There's a $4 discrepancy. 
create a new example to help support your claim. Well, let's make it simple. Let's say something was $100, and I'm going to take 10% off, and another 10% again. Okay? Does that equal 20%? Well, let's see. If I take 10% off of 100, I'm picking easy values. I'm also picking up some the calculator. Remember to multiply by 10%. 10% is 1, right? To change your percent to a decimal, 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 to a So if I multiply by 0.1, that's 0, 0, 1, and I have one decimal place. That's 10. So 10% of 100 is $10. That's the discount. So if I take that $100 and subtract that 10%, I'm $90. Now if I take that $90, now if I take that $90 and subtract it, or multiply it by 10%, and then 1 times 0, 0, 1 times 9 is 9, and the decimal, there's one decimal place, so 10% of 90 is 9. So now if I take 90 minus 9, I am at 80. So if I take 10% off 100, I'm at 90. If I take 10% off of 90, I'm at 81. Well, if I take $100, change colors again. If I take $100 and reduce it by 20%, which is 0 0.2, 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 1 is 2, one decimal place puts it there. $20 is 20% of 100. $100 minus $20 is $80. And that definitely is not equal to $81. Okay, hopefully that was helpful. That is the end of Lesson 29 and Module 1. Go do your homework and study for your end of Module test.